177.8 million units sold worldwide, billions of streams, endless gold and platinum records. He is the king of Atlanta and officially the toxic king. Future, he's been a part of the rap scene for ages and there are few artists who have remained relevant for so long. And in this video, I want to show you the person behind hits like Mask Off, Life is Good or Low Life. Future born as Nevadius Wilburn was born in Atlanta in 1983. He grew up in Atlanta, more specifically in Zone 6. For context, Atlanta is divided into six police zones. These zones have become established among the people over time. There are significant differences between the zones. For example, in Zone 2, that's where all the wealthy people live, and you'll find all those fancy designer stores like Gucci and so on. A complete opposite is Zone 6, where Future comes from. Here you'll find some of the most dangerous housing projects in the entire city. Zone 6 is particularly known for producing many big rappers. Among them are Rich Homie Kwan, Gucci Mane, OJ the Juice Man, and Future. Future grew up in the Kirkwood neighborhood. It's a neighborhood that's also nicknamed Little Mexico simply because there are so many Mexicans living there. Future's childhood wasn't easy. The Kirkwood neighborhood was heavily affected by the crack epidemic in the 80s and 90s. His father left the family when Future was just 10 years old. Because of this, his mother, who worked as an ER doctor, had to work long hours, often coming home very late. And that's why Future was raised by his grandmother. Some twists of fate literally pushed Future into crime. He really had no choice. Many people in his family had drug problems. The craziest thing is that his grandma's house was yeah, a trap house. Yeah, yeah, my house. grandma's house was a house. Like, my, my dad, mother house was a trap house. And my mom, grandma house Jeez. was a trap house. Wow. Dope was sold from this house. His grandmother sold dope. And Future often witnessed the house being raided by the police. That must have been a very wild time, especially because a trap house naturally attracts enemies. So for example, the house was once raided by people who tied up Future, his grandmother, and everyone else in the house, and stole everything valuable. As sad as it sounds, that was everyday life for him. It was nothing special, which is why he got over it quite easily. But one event completely turned his life upside down, and that was the day he was shot. Because in his teenage years, I guess he was around 17, 18. There are no exact details about how old he was then. I shot? I shot in my head. Yeah. yeah. When I was a teenager. That's when he realized he had to leave the streets behind. At a funeral for an uncle, he met his cousin Rico Wade. He was a member of the Dungeon family. The Dungeon family is a rap collective to which many big rappers belonged. Outkast were a part of it, CeeLo Green was a part of it, and later, so was Future. What's really crazy when you think about it is, Future was just hanging out with the Outkast and Andre 3000 in his younger years. That's really crazy, most people don't even know that. Yeah, but during the first meeting, Future was also invited into the dungeon. That was the house where he was welcomed. And he noticed it, but he didn't really like the vibe. That's why after that one session, he didn't go back to the dungeon for three months. But that changed because Future met Rico Wade again at another funeral. And here the two talked again. And then it was clear to Future, okay, hey, I'm going all in now. I'm moving into this house where they're all recording and I'm not going back to my hood. And he really followed through with that. He just lived in this studio for a year. 24 seven recording was happening in this house. And Future himself even says that during those years, he learned a lot about the business simply because he was in a room with Andre 3000 and other big rappers all the time. In the end, Future, who was then known as Meathead, joined a rap group affiliated with the Collective Dungeon family. He carried the name Meathead back then because that was his childhood nickname, simply because his head was disproportionately large compared to his body. The group he joined was called Dark Connect, and they even released an album together which flopped despite featuring Ludacris as a guest. If we compare his current style with what he brought to Dark Connect, you wouldn't even recognize him. Honestly, I wouldn't have guessed it was Future. Despite the commercial flop with the Connect, Future didn't give up on his dream. After a little rebranding, he discarded the name Meathead and then called himself Future, which he still does today simply because everyone in the Dungeon family referred to Future as the future of rap. 
Here's a verse I found online. According to the comments, it's from 2004. Take a listen. Music, domestic with the birds, head to abuse it, capture the moment like paparazzi, I caught in the mummy flash, jewels of money, everything is fly. Pretty intense, right? If it's really from 2004, Future was way ahead of his time. I think you can't compare the style from the Dark Connect era with anything else. Future really worked hard on himself. However, in his early years as a solo artist, he didn't really find success. He didn't drop much even though he worked hard. He rather had legal troubles, although they weren't really serious issues. In 2004, he was arrested for receiving stolen goods and in 2006 for failing to appear in court. That's when these two legendary mugshots were taken. Despite these minor problems outside of music, he never gave up on his dream and kept working. He knew how to market himself and played many live shows in Atlanta completely free, just with the goal of somehow building a name and slowly becoming big in Atlanta's underground scene. It worked quite well because the mixtapes he dropped between 2010 and 2011 were well received. Among them, he also released the collaboration with Gucci Mani, Three Bricks. Gucci Mani already had a name back then, so it was a big deal for Future. Additionally, he dropped the mixtapes 1000, Dirty Sprite, and True Story. True Story featured Future's breakout single, Tony Montana. They went quite viral on YouTube in the early years, and the hook was just catchy. Drake wasn't nearly as big back then as he is today, but he jumped on the remix of Tony Montana, marking the first collaboration between Future and Drake, which was the beginning of a very strong collaborative career, the first of many insane collabs. With such a steep rise in his career, it didn't take long for Future to sign his first deals. Among others, he signed a deal with Rocco, a rapper from Atlanta, and a deal with Epic Records. One thing that has haunted him for a long time in his career was already very noticeable back then, his extremely high drug consumption. He often addressed this in his lyrics. I mean, even one of his first mixtapes is called Dirty Sprite. Since Future became one of the biggest rappers in his career and lean drinking was actually part of him as a person, many young people took him as an example. This also made Future one of the rappers who made lean as popular as we know it today. When Juice World was able to connect with Future for the first time in 2018, he immediately told him, Hey, you inspired me to drink lean in the sixth grade. That hit Future hard. His response was simply, I'm sorry. Because here, Future realized that he had negatively influenced many young men who saw him as a role model. This made Future think a lot. He doesn't really glorify his drugs in his lyrics anymore. He doesn't even take them anymore. But we'll come to that at the end of the video. So guys, stay away from drinking lean. Try Holy instead. Holy is a real alternative to soft drinks with those artificial additives. Holy drinks are sugar-free and taste really nice. You should try it, trust me. The peach black tea iced tea tastes really nice. It's best to try out the entire range with the starter set deluxe set. Here you get a total of 40 servings plus a shaker for only 50 euros. And if you go to the first link in the description and use the code REZIMARCAVELLI5, you'll get a 5 euro discount on your first order. In 2012, the time had finally come for his debut album, Pluto. When it was released, this album debuted at number 8 on the Billboard charts and sold 42,000 units in its first week. Those are very strong numbers for a debut album. In the same year, he was also part of the XXL Freshman list. You've got Kid Inc, Macklemore, and Machine Gun Kelly in there. Let's be honest, Future's freestyle Cold wasn't boy, like good. Montana, with the bird game like Santana. Real street nigga right before Atlanta. But in the end, that's relatively irrelevant because Future killed it afterward. He started by taking over songs from his colleagues with his feature parts. The best example is the song You Don't Even Know by Rocco. Seriously, until now, I didn't even know that this song wasn't by Future. I always thought it was his song, not just a feature. I have to mention again how insane this song is. I mean, just listen to this beat. The crazy thing is, Future was also featured on another song in the same year, which became a worldwide hit, Bugatti, by Ace Hood and Rick Ross. The music video for this song has over 340 million views on YouTube today. On April 22, 2014, 
Future followed up with his second studio album, and please check out the feature guests Pharrell Williams, Pusha T, Kanye West, Drake, Lil Wayne, and Andre 3000. Let me repeat, this was his second studio album, and he just got the Avengers of Rap on his album. In the same year, he released another project which included one of my favorite future tracks, Codeine Crazy. This song was on Monster. I remember the vibe of this song blew me away. To this day, this song remains one of the best future tracks. After that, it was uphill for future. Honestly, if I were to discuss every album and every song, this video would easily go on for an hour. Because Future, bro, he's just a hit machine. I don't know any rapper who delivers as many hits as he does. Maybe Drake, but no one else. Year after year, he delivered hit after hit. So, I'll just show you a few of his biggest hits here. Overall, he managed to release two number one hits, 10 top 10 hits, and 168 top 100 songs. But the craziest statistic is that eight albums charted at number one. All in all, almost all of his releases landed in the top 10 of the charts, which is incredible. He was also nominated for Grammys 11 times, winning two. And Future owes all of this to his own hard work. He started hustling hard early, staying in the studio until late at night and just spending every day recording music. I've made countless videos about other rappers on this channel. And for this reason, I've seen countless interviews too. And guys, believe me, I've rarely seen artists so focused on their music. And that's still the case after all these years. Future is a hustler. He's born to produce hits. And that's exactly why he is where he is today. But before we wrap up the chapter on his music career, we definitely have to talk about his confession. His confession that he stopped taking drugs. Because he delayed that, he didn't tell anyone at first. He recorded the album DS2 completely sober and kept it a secret, simply because he was afraid people would say, hey, you're not taking drugs anymore, you're recording your music sober, now it doesn't sound good anymore. But that wasn't the case. Future eventually leaked it and said, hey, I'm not doing drugs anymore, I'm off lean. And people still celebrated him. He's bigger than ever today. People are still waiting for his collaboration album with Metro Boomin, and I think that's gonna tear everything apart this year. Almost every rapper clashes with other artists at some point in their career. That's normal, it's part of it. And beefs like that are actually part of the good tone in the rap business. For this reason, Future had a few minor beefs, nothing serious though, but I'd like to tell you about them too. I mean, did you know that Future and T-Pain aren't on good terms? T-Pain talked about how he was in the club one day, and this guy came up to him and said he was Future's brother. So T-Pain led him into his lounge and they partied together. At the end of the night, T-Pain went up to the Ologied brother of Future and said he wanted to work with Future. The guy responded really disrespectfully, saying his brother would never work with him. So T-Pain said he kept his cool because his wife was behind him and casually resolved the situation. He wanted to shake the guy's hand and leave, but the alleged brother of Future didn't even want to shake his hand. In the end, T-Pain felt so attacked that he wrote a tweet. He said, isn't it funny how the new T-Pain has to use the old Bugatti from the old T-Pain for his Bugatti hook? Of course, T-Pain was referring to the music video for the song Bugatti, where Future supposedly sat in a rented car owned by T-Pain. And since Future and T-Pain were often compared because they both use a lot of autotune, this was another sneak diss. Like, hey, the new T-Pain has to sit in my Bugatti to shoot a music video. Future didn't even respond to that. He ignored it until T-Pain kicked again. Because in a DJ Vlad interview, he simply said, hey, Future can't use autotune, he's using it wrong. That statement prompted Future to speak up for the first time. He said the chances of him collaborating with T-Pain were now very slim, and to this day no collaboration between the two has emerged. 
Another beef that many of you probably didn't have on your radar is the beef with Gucci Mane. When Gucci Mane was released from prison in 2016, he really wanted to release music so he connected with Future to record the second part of Briggs. They did that and Gucci Mane just released it as a free mixtape. The thing is, when Gucci Mane went to jail, free mixtapes were still common. But not in 2016 anymore because streaming services had taken over and if you release such a tape as a free mixtape, it's a financial disaster as well as marketing wise because no one will listen to the album if it's not on the normal streaming services. That pissed off Future, so there was radio silence between the two rappers. But that changed in 2020 because Gucci Mane publicly admitted he made a mistake and the two have reconciled and are cool with each other again. Did you know that Young Dark and Future weren't always cool with each other either? It all started with a tweet from Metro Boomin. He wrote, I wake up every day and new mixtapes fall from the sky. I think we all know where this trend comes from. He also posted a picture of Future. For some reason, Young Thug felt completely attacked and responded to it. In his responses, he started dissing Future. I guess because Metro Boomin posted Future's picture and so a little Twitter war started. Future responded, Young Thug responded. In the end, Young Thug wanted to beat up Metro Boomin. Metro Boomin wanted to beat up Young Thug, really unnecessary. In the end though, all problems were resolved. Young Thug even apologized for all the internet drama. And in the end, Young Thug and Future even released a tape together. My bro Tayfinity has addressed this beef a bit more extensively. Feel free to check out his channel. Then there was another beef that was very expensive for Futur because he beefed with his old label boss, Rocco. And the disputes between the two are relatively simple to explain. Future signed a deal back then which had a term of several albums and he didn't take it. He preferred to focus on his own label free bands and simply ignored the contract with Rocco, which of course is not the nicest thing to do. And Rocco saw Future's success and just sued him. In the end, everything was settled out of court simply because Future made a transfer of several million dollars to Rocco. That was probably the best signing Rocco ever made. All in all, those were the beefs that were relevant in the rap game. But Future is also known for bringing a few actions with women, which some find funny and others more critical. For example, Future has several baby mamas. He has a total of eight children. I believe almost every child has a different mother. No matter how critical you see Future, you have to admit, he is a very good father. He takes care of his children. That's very important to him. However, he constantly has disputes with women. If you're interested, I could make a top 10 most toxic Future moments video. I think that could be quite funny. Yeah, guys, that was the video about Future. I hope you liked it. Write in the comments what your favorite Future song is. See you. Until next time. Bye.